This lesson deals with an RL switching circuit using a single pole double throw switch. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 7 starting at page 16. Suppose we have the following circuit, which has a single inductance, a single pole double throw switch, dual power supply, and some passive components. Suppose that we solve for the voltage across the 25 ohm resistor and the current through the 50 ohm resistor. Our first step is to formulate the equations. Since we have only one inductance, we have a first order differential equation and the form of the solution is a plus b e to the minus t minus t0 over tau. But since our switch is switching at t equals 0, then t0 is equal to 0. Now given two things that we're solving for, let's call this a1 and b1, a2 and b2. I'm going to graph the response of v out and i sub s for all time. So let's find the value of those variables just before the switch changes state. We also need to find the current in the inductance because as we pass through zero, this current cannot jump instantaneously. Now these can, and they may or may not, we'll have to find this in every problem whether we're asked to solve for it or not. The switch has been in this position for a long time. As I mentioned before, the inductance looks like a short circuit if it's in a circuit for a long time in steady state. The voltage cross here, you think of as a voltage divider with the zero volts of the short circuit, voltage divided with the 25 ohms and the 50 ohms. You get zero volts. The current that flows in here is just going to be the voltage across this resistance divided by 50 ohms. Now with the short circuit here and 10 volts here, we'll have 10 volts divided by 50 or 200 milliamps. Our third step is then to let the switch change state coming from the first position to the second position. And now we're going to find our two variables of interest, V out and I sub S. But using the fact that the current that was flowing in this inductance at zero minus was 200 milliamps, and that must still be true at zero plus. We have quite a few different ways of analyzing this circuit. Let me show you another idea here. Since I know the current in this element is 200 milliamps at this one instant in time, I can model that as a current source of 200 milliamps. This is called a substitution theorem in circuit theory. It would allow me to use superposition to solve this problem, as well as other methods. Using superposition, I'll set the source equal to zero, which makes it an open circuit. And then the current that's flowing in this circuit would be the voltage in this direction divided by the total resistance. That's going to be equal to minus 10 volts divided by 50 plus 50 and 25, minus 80 milliamps. That current also flows through this 25 ohm resistance, the voltage should just be multiplying that current by 25. So this is the value of I sub S and V out due to the first source at time T equals zero plus. Now let's set the 10 volt source equal to zero. I'm short circuiting that. Now we've got a current source here. We've got 50 ohms in parallel with 75. So we could use our current divider rule, find the current in this direction. We have two different expressions for the current divider. We have a conductance current divider and then a resistive current divider if there's only two elements in parallel. Let's use a resistive current divider. I want the current in the 50 ohm resistance. It's going to be the other resistance, the 75 ohms, over the 50 plus the 75, multiplied by the 200 milliamps. It gives me 120 milliamps. If I have 200 milliamps here and 120 milliamps here, then I must have 80 left over. Multiply that by 25 ohms, I'll get 2 volts, but the current's flowing in this direction. That's going to create a drop like this, and I want the voltage in the other direction. So let's flip the sign of that. So that's my value of I sub S due to the second source, and V out due to the second source. I can add those together. And so for V out, 0 plus, minus 2 plus minus 2, or minus 4. And that's going to be A1 plus B1 times E to the 0, which is 1, so just A1 plus B1. For I sub S at zero plus, I'm going to add the first result and the second result, so minus 80 milliamps plus 120, so 40 milliamps, and that's going to be A2 plus B2 times E to the zero. One equation in two unknowns for A1 and B1 and A2 and B2. I need a second constraint to solve the remaining variable. Take a look at T approaches infinity. As I said before, in steady state, an inductance looks like a short circuit. The way to remember that is that it's just a coil of wire and you can think of the wire as being perfect, thereby creating a short. Solve again for the voltage cross, the resistance, and the current through this resistance. Use our voltage divider idea again and say that this is zero volts, voltage divided with 25, 
over 25 plus 50. That's going to be equal to a1 plus b1 times e to the minus infinity, just a1. And then the value of I sub s would be the current as a result of a voltage in this direction divided by 50. Of course, that's the negative what we have here, so it's going to be minus 10 over 50, and that's minus 200 milliamps, and that's going to be a2 plus b2 times e to the minus infinity. Now we can solve for b1 and b2. Before we do that, let's do step five. Let's find the Thevenin resistance looking into this circuit in the inductance terminals with all the independent sources set equal to zero. And again, we're looking at the switch after it's taken its switching action at t equals t0, which in this case was zero. I see 50 ohms in parallel with 75. So the product over the sum is equal to 30. And then my time constant is L over R Thevenin, so 150 millihenries divided by 30 ohms in five milliseconds. In our final step, we can put all this together. A1 plus B1 was minus four. A1 was zero, so therefore B1 is minus four. So V out is minus four e to the minus T over tau. For T greater than zero, we found that it was zero for T less than zero. Now when T is equal to zero here, we get minus four, so we have a discontinuity at T equals zero. So we want to include the equality sign here. Current in the resistance, solve for its value of B2. Now we have A2 plus B2 is 40 milliamps. A2 is minus 200 milliamps, so let's solve for B2. So bring this on this side of the equation, we'll take the negative of A2, so we get a plus sign here, so we get 240 milliamps. A2 plus B2 e to the minus T over tau. This is true for T greater than zero. For T less than zero, we found that it was 200 milliamps. Now when T is equal to zero here, we get 240 milli minus 200 milli, which is 40 milliamps. So again, we have a discontinuity for the current in this resistance, like we did for the voltage across the other resistance. This is how we solve for an RL switching circuit using a single pole double throw switch.